welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church's 180 degree small group series episode 5. We are going through scripture looking at different characters from the Bible and how God turned their life around 180 degrees through an encounter with Jesus and God's word. Today we're going to be looking at John chapter 5, the healing pool of Bethesda. Now I couldn't find a healing pool but I'm sitting in front of the 180 gallon saltwater fish tank in Trinity Lutheran School's science room. This is certainly a healing place for me to go and sit and watch the fish and just be at peace. To start this episode, let's take some sharing time to talk about a place where you can go and experience some peace. Also talk about how long that peace usually lasts for you. The people in John 4 went to the healing pool of Bethesda to find healing and find peace. Take a moment and read in chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. You probably noticed when you were reading that most Bibles do not include a verse 4 in this story. The reason behind that is that this verse does not appear in any of the oldest manuscripts. People believe that at some point it was an editorial written by someone who copied the text much later on. It's interesting, however, to note that verse 4 says, you can usually find it in the footnote of your Bible, from time to time an angel of the Lord would come down and stir up the waters. The first one into the pool after such disturbance would be cured of whatever disease that he had. We don't believe that this is the inspired word by the Apostle John, but it does explain why the people were there. They had a superstition that an angel would come down and heal the first person after the water was stirred. Let's take a moment now and think about some of the superstitions in which we put our faith. Some of the things that we believe will happen even though they're not in God's word. When Jesus comes to the pool at Bethesda, he finds a man who had been crippled for 38 years. And he asks him the question in verse 6, Do you want to get well? It seems like an odd question, but sometimes when we have a handicap, we can get so used to it that we don't know what our life would look like without it. What handicap in your life gets in the way of your walking with God or cripples your relationship with him? that you may be reluctant to give up or to be healed from. Take a moment in your groups now and talk about what that thing is. Take a moment now to read in your groups uh, verses 7 through 15 to continue the story of this crippled man by the pool of Bethesda. In verse 7, the man replies to Jesus, Sir, I have no one to help me in the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes in ahead of me. What he's saying is that according to the superstition, the first one in the pool after the water is stirred by the angel will be healed. Yet because of his handicap, he cannot get into the water. Jesus cuts right through the superstition in verse 8 and gives him a simple command. Get up, pick up your mat and walk. And at once the man is cured and he picks up his mat and he walked. Take a moment in your groups and talk about how maybe you would respond if you had been crippled for 38 years and suddenly you were well again. Now the text goes on to say that the day that this healing occurred was actually the Sabbath. And the Sabbath law prohibited anyone from carrying their mat. So when the man was walking around with his mat, he was approached by the temple leaders and they asked him why he was carrying his mat on the Sabbath. And he said, the man who made me well said, pick up your mat and walk. And they asked him, who is this fellow? 
but at this point the man couldn't identify Jesus. First, Jesus cuts through all the superstitions and heals this man, not according to what they believed in falsely, but according to the power of the living God. Second, Jesus shows that he is greater even than the laws of the Sabbath. As he tells this man to do something that they considered to be unlawful. So Jesus is more powerful than the superstition. Jesus is more powerful than the law. The man goes uh, on to walk into Jesus later on. In verse 14, later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Jesus points out that the effects of sin are even worse than the effects of being crippled. Jesus, of course, is also the cure for the man's sin. Because of his death and resurrection, he provides for us in our need for salvation and a savior. For our final discussion question, talk about how following Jesus grants us lasting peace, lasting comfort, and lasting healing from sin, even more so than any superstitions or any place on earth like this aquarium that gives you calm.